There are thousands of members of ISSA, and we value them all. Each has a unique story to tell. This month, we're featuring one of our member organizations that has experienced a very busy past couple of years. To do this, I welcome Carrie Jaros, the CEO at Gojo Industries. Well, Carrie, thank you for giving up a few minutes of your time to be on our program today. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great, Jeff, and I am so happy to be here. So am I. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about from the beginning. You know, Gojo has been around some, what, 75 years, according to your website? Almost 78. Wow. Amazing. Great accomplishment. I'd like you to walk us through some of the history of Gojo, just some high points that brought you to where you're at today. Sure. I'd love to do that. So market making innovation has always been uh, the driver of our business. And that really started with our founders, Jerry and Goldie Lippman. So almost 78 years ago, they started the business uh, and they started the business uh, by coming up with a, um, a solution for a real human problem. And that real human problem at the time was that workers in rubber factories and in other industrial environments who, whose hands got really dirty during the day with carbon black or grease. Um, when they cleaned their hands at the end of the day, they typically would dip them in kerosene or in benzene and then wipe them off with a rag. And Goldie Lippman was working in a rubber factory in Akron, Ohio, like many women after World War II. And she came home one day and said, Jerry, uh, you know, this is how we're all cleaning our hands at the end of the day. And it doesn't smell good. It doesn't feel safe. It's leaving our skin really dry and chapped. There has to be a better way. And so uh, Jerry Lippman, who believed that everything he knew, he learned from someone else, went and walked the halls of a local university. And Jerry only had a 10th grade education. A university was not a place where he necessarily felt at home. But he walked the halls asking around, trying to find somebody who could help him solve that problem. And so you fast forward, he and Clarence Cook came up with the original cream cleaner. Uh, it's our the Gojo product that most people are most, you know, sort of nostalgically remember. The smell reminds them of, you know, working on a car with their dad or their grandpa. And that original cream cleaner was really the first away from the sink uh, way to clean your hands. And the business grew. It was a great time uh, for that kind of invention. You had service stations popping up on every corner in the U.S., and so Jerry went around to these service stations and he would put a little bit of his original cream cleaner on his palm, walk into the service station and shake hands with the, with the lead mechanic. And what Jerry would say is, you know, nine out of 10 times, the guy would look, would wipe his palm off to prepare to hit him in the nose. Like, what is this stuff that's on my hand? And he'd see a clean streak and he'd say, how does this work? This is amazing. This is a miracle. And then would end up being a customer. But one out of 10 times, the guy would just hit him straight out. So it was a risky, you know, risky sales model, but it really paid off in those early years. Man, I would have loved to meet him back in. <laughs> what a, what a great marketing move. Absolutely. Can we, that? we can learn from that. I think so too. And I, you know, the idea that um, we seek insights from anyone and anywhere, this idea that you go out in the world, you find real problems, you're willing to ask others for help as you're working through your solutions. Um, you know, that was all, all that stuff that Jerry role modeled is still a part of our Gojo values today. Fantastic story. Well, thank you for those details. It's great to hear. Now, I believe you're just out the road from me. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. You're up in Akron. Yes, that's true. What do you, what do you find with your facility you're proud of and your workers? Can you talk about culture and, and what makes you happy about that? Absolutely. I, I tell our team every day, there is no group of people I would rather work with. Um, we have been through a lot together these last three and a half years. I think we already had an incredible culture, you know, a 75 year old, wonderful family enterprise culture before the pandemic. But the last three and a half years have tested our mettle um, during the pandemic, especially in those early days. Um, it's hard to remember now, but the whole world was sheltering in place at their houses and our team was getting up every day and driving on the empty highways in to work. And we were running 24-7, uh, trying to keep up with what was really infinite demand for our Purell products. Um, I remember going in on a Saturday to serve lunch to our team. And I spoke with a supervisor who, whom I was told had just worked her 21st day straight. She had not taken one day off in 21 days. 
And I asked her, how are you doing this? And she said, Carrie, our purpose is saving lives and making life better. What else can I do? I have to be here. There aren't enough supervisors to manage all these shifts. And that is just such a great example of, um, of our sort of Gojo values and our Gojo purpose. And I see it every single day, no matter what the problem is, whether it was pandemic or whether it's, you know, new things that pop up from uh, trying to manufacture more efficiently or uh, incorporate some of the new equipment that we've installed, uh, the whole team really just pulls together to get the work done. You know, when people hear of Gojo, they probably think of Purell, right? You must do other things. You've mentioned a few in the past, but what other products are you proud of? Yeah, so what most people don't know about our business is that before the pandemic, we were really a B2B soap company. So, uh, you know, part of our our really long legacy with ISSA is really being a soap manufacturer. And um, two thirds of our business was soap. Uh, 90% of our business was B2B. So while people often think of us as a, as a consumer sanitizer company, we really are primarily still a B2B company. Today, we make about as much soap as we do sanitizer because sanitizer has grown uh, considerably over the last few years. Um, and those are our two primary products still today. Uh, we also are now in the surfaces space. So in 2018, we launched Purell Surface Spray. It's an awesome product if you haven't tried it. It took us seven years to find a formula that had both the safety and the efficacy that we believe have to be there for a product to be called Purell. Um, you can use it on, you know, dog dishes and your baby's, uh, your baby's uh, high chair table. Uh, you can use it on your smelly hockey equipment, Jeff. You could use it uh, like inside your shoes. It, it works on soft surfaces and hard surfaces. And it kills, uh, it kills like 22 germs in 30 seconds. It's just an awesome product. Uh, and you can eat right off, off of the surface afterward. I wouldn't do that with your shoes or your hockey equipment, but you could. You could. Good advice. I don't have any hockey equipment, but I do have running shoes. So, Carrie, you know, you've been with Gojo for how long? Um, I've been in, in and around Gojo for almost 10 years. 10 years. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got here, because I'm sure you didn't respond to a help wanted posting. No, I actually came into Gojo um, in a very uh, non-traditional way. So um, I actually spent my first year and a half at Gojo as an outside board member. And I was working in the uh, family office for the family who owns Gojo, the Camper family. And I was, uh, you know, I was involved in Gojo as a board member, but I wasn't uh, on the management team. So I moved inside in 2016 and I had responsibility for innovation and strategy and then I became COO. And then uh, on January 1st of 2020, I made the really, really interesting decision to take the role of CEO two weeks before global pandemic. So it's been a, uh, it's been a pretty interesting few years. Good timing. The pandemic was tough, but you, you were there to help. So you're the boss. People know who you are in the company. What is something they don't know about Carrie Gerald's? Maybe oh, well, the first thing I have to say, Jeff, is that Gojo, we would never call anybody a boss. That is just totally not how we think about things. So I didn't mean it that way, but I understand. I hear you, but I wake up every day and my job is to be of service. Um, what is something that people don't know about me? Yeah. Um, so probably very few people know that I am uh, an expert canoeist, kind of random. I, uh, I grew up canoeing in Canada. And uh, I still race. So this summer, I actually won several trophies racing in Canada. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I've been in a canoe before, but normally I end up upside down. Maybe I need a lesson. Yeah, I want to watch you before I take you into my canoe because upside down sounds wet. But, uh, you know, we've got we've got some plans. All right. Sounds good. You talked about the pandemic and how Gojo responded and the fantastic team that was there. I'm just thinking... What happened as well on a competitive side of, of this, when the pandemic started, it seemed like everyone started making hand sanitizer. Distilleries were making hand sanitizer. How did, the t how did your company feel about that and what did you do? Yeah, so I think in the early days of the pandemic, Jeff, um, we were very focused on making as much as we could make. Um, because every time we put a dispenser on the wall, we feel like we're making a promise that we'll be able to to, to keep that dispenser full and keep the people in that facility healthy and well. 
So we were really focused on maximizing uh, our own production. Um, you know, of course, there were all kinds of companies pouring into this space, but also lots of other space. There were people making ventilators who didn't normally make ventilators. People were making masks and gowns. And I think as, a, um, as someone who cares deeply about public health and a company that cares deeply about public health, I think we applauded those efforts. I think, you know, we, we couldn't meet the demand in the early days. And so we were grateful that there were others who were doing that work. Um, I think as the pandemic wore on, unfortunately, um, what we came to realize, as did the FDA and others, is that a lot of the product that was being produced actually was either not effective and or not safe. And um, and so we saw, you know, almost 300 brands of hand sanitizer get banned by the FDA. Um, we watched that product get donated to schools and long term care facilities and churches uh, and so there was a lot of sort of negative uh, fallout, frankly, from I think what started at the very beginning from a good place. And so we really tried throughout that whole process to be a steward for health and well-being, uh, to to both increase our own um, our own output, which we've done in a really significant way through the investments we've made, but also to be a consultant, frankly, or an advisor to those in the industry who make sure that the products that are out there are, are, the, are the ones that we all want our kids using or our parents using. I want to talk in the same um, line of thought here. As you know, the CDC has studies and they talk about how hand washing and hand hygiene and hand sanitizer, they save lives. And one study that they have is about how in one, in one case, reduced classroom absenteeism by some 20% because of alcohol-based hand sanitizers. What can we do, Gojo and ISSA as your trade association, to inform people about this, to take this to the next level so everyone understands this and embraces it, the hand hygiene aspect? Jeff, that is a great question. Um, first and foremost, uh, I do think that the pandemic uh, really um, elevated uh, the role of overall hygiene, uh, surface hygiene, hand hygiene, um, you know, oral hygiene, I think it really elevated those things in public consciousness. Uh, and I do think many people have actually learned how to incorporate hand sanitizer into their lives in those moments that matter, and have realized that that's a really easy thing to do. They can carry their own um, their, their own small bottle. They There's much more product readily available out in the environment. That said, um, I still believe that there are uh, there are sanitizer dispensers in maybe 5% of the places that it would make sense to have them when you go out in the world. Um, and we're seeing actually the portables business at retail grow dramatically, which to me indicates that people aren't getting, they're not getting sanitizer provided in public, they're needing to carry it themselves. And, you know, my lived experience when I go out to restaurants or when I'm in a, you know, out at a sporting event or... Uh, in an office building, I don't see sanitizer in all the places I want it. So, uh, you know, to your question about how can we all change that, I think um, hand sanitizer is something that should always be a part of the conversation. I don't think it always has to be the center of the plate, but if I'm a distributor sales rep and I'm out talking to a facility about the right products to put out to send a message that we care, to send a message to employees, guests, and patients, that it's a clean and safe facility. All of our data suggests that putting hand sanitizer out is the right thing to do. Uh, it's going to have great benefits from a health and well-being point of view, and it's frankly also going to have really good benefits um, from a reputational point of view for that facility. I am most excited this year to show off our brand new dispensing system, the ES10. Uh, the ES10 has been long in the making. So we started, uh, we started design and development on this system well before the pandemic. Uh, during the pandemic, even though most of Gojo was really focused on pandemic response, a group of people stayed committed to advancing this really innovative dispensing system. Uh, it's actually the system for us that has had the most time in the field before launch. So we will have had over 600,000 hours of this dispenser system being tested in the field. And we're so excited to bring it to everyone at ISSA. So let me tell you what's cool about it. Um, in The way we're talking about the system, ES10 is less is more. So our ES10 system has less maintenance, less waste, 
and more of a premium experience. It's delivering more benefits to the facility that puts it in. Um, on the maintenance side, um, we're taking uh, this incredible technology we launched in our ES8 system, uh, the at a glance refill and our energy on the refill. Both of those things mean that it's much easier to service this dispenser, to know when, you know, know when the refill needs to be changed and that you never have to change the batteries in the dispenser. And we're pulling that forward with some really nice enhancements. So one of those is uh, we've, we've made some enhancements in the way the battery and the energy system work. So it's just a nice little double A battery, really easy to recycle, even cooler. We have the first ever dispenser advisor. It's a cell phone based app that allows someone who sets this dispenser up to be notified when it's time to change the refill. Pretty cool. Um, in terms of less waste, uh, so we really take environmental sustainability seriously at Gojo. It's always a core part of any design of a new product. This dispenser will use 30% we'll use less plastic in the dispenser and the refills. So we've done a bunch of work to reduce the amount of plastic. Um, and uh, also it's a, just from an environmental sustainability uh, perspective, 100% of the formulas That'll, that'll be in this dispenser from a soap and sanitizer point of view are eco-label uh, eco label certified, third-party certified. Uh, and then in terms of the premium experience, and this is the part I, I, I'll demo it for you and then you'll make fun of me later. Uh, so the noise that a normal dispenser makes is something like, eh, eh. yeah, okay, that's not great, but you know what I'm talking about. You put your hand under, okay. This dispenser has what I can only describe as a tiger purr. I'm not going to do that one for you. You're going to have to come to the booth and check it out. Uh, it's also just a beautiful dispenser. It's skinny and tall. It's lost its COVID weight. Uh, it's a dispenser that looks great in every every setting. So I can't wait to show it to you uh, in Vegas. Have you done stand-up comedy in the past? No, but oh. I'm all, you know, maybe this is the year. Maybe this is the year. Let's wrap up our conversation and talk about our partnership. You know, a mem your membership with ISSA, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't expect you to know the answer to this because it predates you and me, and I'm a lot older than you are. How long has Gojo been a member of ISSA? That is an excellent question. I, I, a bird told me that ISSA is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Correct. I'm going to guess that Gojo has been a member for 40 years. Wow. This is a moment, Carrie. 69 years. Really? Isn't that amazing? That, that's amazing. I'm so proud of that. That's very good. Since 1954, I, I consulted with our membership team, and that's the answer. So awesome. No one else knows this except you and me until people watch this episode of Straight Talk. So we were just a little eight year old when we, you know, came on board. I I can't believe our wisdom all the way back then. Yeah, it's amazing. But I thought that was interesting. That's a long time. So it's a great partnership. So I thought, let's talk about what you do with ISSA. Can you share some of your thoughts there? Because I know you're involved with a few projects. I'll let you have a few minutes to talk about that. Sure. So, um, you know, ISSA is an absolutely essential part of, uh, of Gojo. I think, um, you know, we look forward, first of all, to the ISSA show every year as really, I think, the pinnacle for our industry. Uh, it's the opportunity for us to get together with all of our customers, uh, with many of their customers uh, to see what's going on uh, more broadly in the in the industry and in the category and really catch up on sort of the trends in the news. Um, we have incredibly productive sessions while we're there, um, you know, whether they're sessions that ISSA is running from a training point of view or whether they're sessions that we're putting together and taking advantage of all those folks being, you know, typically in Vegas together. So the show is really important. Um, we also have been very involved at Gojo with Hygieia, uh, which is an ISSA charity. Uh, Hygieia, uh, you know, was really formed to help make the cleaning industry the industry of choice for women to work in from a career point of view. Um, and I've been pretty involved really from the beginning. Uh, there are some incredible leaders who have really designed and driven that organization who come both from the manufacturing side and from the distribution side. And I know that team members at Gojo take advantage of the programming through Hygieia, whether it's mentorship or training or networking events, and that that's true really throughout the whole industry. So that's another, another piece of what ISSA does that I'm really proud of. Any memories of ISSA show you'd like to share? Wow. Uh, 
I mean, it's, it is like my favorite time of the year. It's like the Super Bowl for us. Um, I have many great memories that happen sort of, you know, out, out at night when we're getting together with folks, you know, whether we're in a casino or at a party, um, you know, where I'm reminded that this industry is not only special because of the really important work we do together out in the world, uh, you know, every day with our products and our services, but that the relationships are really different in this industry than they are in other industries. Um, we are friends and we're friends within our companies, but across our companies with customers. I, we're friends with folks who work at competitors and just spending that time together, um, I, you know, I think is some of the most valuable um, recharging that I do all year, getting to see these people I care about and talk about work I love. I like that because I value that too, the networking, the seeing people, competition or non-competition. But don't you think we should have the show in Ohio? I mean, we're happy to help you pull it together. I, if, I'm not sure we're going to get a lot of takers in November in Ohio, but I, you know, I, I can sell anything, Jeff. You just, you just give me the cue. 